up on MCTV this week. How does cancer affect students on campus? And plans for building a better relationship between Monmouth College and the community. This week starts now. Hello and welcome to MCTV this week. For Tori Philbin, I'm Janessa Calderon. Colleges Against Cancer creates awareness about cancer and its effects to the students here at Monmouth College. Last Friday, Colleges Against Cancer held their CAC showcase in Dahl Chapel. Students learned more about the club's mission and Relay for Life. I think it's a really good organization um, because it gets college students involved and aware of the fact that there is a risk of cancer in today's society. You know, there's more carcinogenic foods and you know, whatnot out there than there was before. So it's very good that we're aware and having more of a front against it this early. At the showcase, students showed off their talents. Professor Richard Johnson shared his story about his battle with cancer, and students learned that Colleges Against Cancer's mission is to raise money for Relay for Life, cancer education, and promote a healthy living. Relay for Life is a bigger event that is more to celebrate survivors, and it is to get a lot of people together in the community just to raise awareness and to raise a lot more money to give to the American Cancer Society. To demonstrate how many students are affected by cancer, students stood with glow sticks in their hands to represent how many of their lives have been touched by cancer. And we just all come together with everybody standing, raising the glow stick. It was just a beautiful moment knowing how many people really did get affected by cancer. They raised $135 for Relay for Life, which, be, which will be held on Saturday, April 11th. The town and gown relationship was discussed at the last associate's luncheon for the semester. Monmouth City Administrator Lowell Crow spoke about building a better partnership between the college and community. During the presentation, Crow spoke to different internship opportunities within the city and the initiatives to beautify the downtown area of Monmouth. Sherry Brooks, Alumni Relations Coordinator for the college, believes this partnership could be fruitful for both parties. In return, what that does is it benefits um, the college and the community. It makes it bigger. It makes it a stronger. Um, and it will even help the students of Monmouth College want to stay in Monmouth, um, maybe start businesses of their own to get involved with the community. The Monmouth College Associates Luncheon brings members of the community together to enjoy lunch and a presentation about the happenings of the city or the college. On Tuesday, November 18th, student organization Stella's Voice hosted a young woman from Moldova who came to speak about her life and bring awareness about sex trafficking. Stella's Voice provides a home for poverty-ridden girls in Moldova after they aged out of the state-run orphanages at 16. One such young woman from Moldova named Stella, Stella Slanina, shared her story of being saved from slavery through rescue, faith, and giving back by taking action. On numerous, Monmouth, on numerous college campuses, Stella's Voice chapters are dedicated to human trafficking awareness. An orphan went from death into life. And it's so beautiful just to see the transformation in her. And it's not just her. We have, like I said, 50 more girls that have the same kind of story. Each one is individual and each one has their own story, but it's the same thing, a story of hopelessness brought to life. It re they really shine a light on what is going on in the world with human trafficking. And we don't think that slavery still exists. We still think of it as um, in the history books, but there's more slaves now than there ever have been um, in history. There are about 36 million. Um, and it's just, it's in America, it's around the world. For more information on Stella's Voice, go to stellasvoice.org. In late November, WMCR sold mustaches in order to raise awareness for men's health issues for November. Students could buy one mustache for 50 cents or three for a dollar with the money going to benefit the Movember Foundation. WMCR sold over 100 mustaches and raised about $50. The Movember Foundation supports prostate cancer and testicular cancer as well as other men's health issues. I hope when people wear their mustaches they, they realize there's a deeper meaning behind that and that is that there's a lot of men's health that is um, not really looked at, not really um, put into focus. So selling mustaches, wearing mustaches kind of gives that message that there's, there's men's health that needs to be looked at as well. For more information or to tune into WMCR, 
go to monmouthcollege.edu slash WMCR. Taking a look at some events on campus this week. Tomorrow night at 7 p.m., the Maple Leaf Community Series hosts the Caterpillar Band in the Doll Chapel. Students are admitted for free. The William Lowell Putnam Mathematical Competition will take place on Saturday at 9 a.m. in the Math Center. And Christmas comes to Monmouth early. Come to the annual concert this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. to hear performances from the music ensembles. The concert takes place in the Doll Chapel. Coming up in sports. The women's basketball team looking to give their new coach, Katie Marcella, her first win. I like this next. You don't want to gain the freshman 15 like these guys. You want to be fit and active like this guy. And this guy. So come on down to the Trotter Fitness Center where we have everything from rock climbing walls to top notch machines. If that's not enough, go on over to the free weights and see if you can handle it with the big dogs. Get your butt into the huff. Don't gain that freshman 15. The week before Thanksgiving, the women's basketball team took on Benedictine University for their second home game of the season. The Scots win the tip-off to start the game off strong, however, find themselves down 30-18 with 2.52 left in the first half. Senior Tiffany Churchill went 3-for-3 three three from the three-point line to allow the Scots to steal momentum for the second half, making her second three-pointer just seconds before the buzzer. Benedictine would fight back with this putback in order to keep themselves alive in the second half. Mama top Benedictine 72-68 for head coach Katie Marcella's first win as a fighting Scot. Well, coming back from Saturday was a tough loss, and we realized then that we needed to pick up the intensity a lot on the defensive and offensive end. So we went over, obviously, a lot of what Benedictine likes to do and tried to guard that defensively and then just turn it up on the offensive end. The Scots play at home again tonight against rival Knox College. That game's scheduled to tip off at 5.30. Also before the break, the women's JV basketball team matched up against Carl Sandberg. Mama started out with the lead in the first half from key players, Carrie Dotson and Christy Reagan. Dotson with the ball here. She drives the lane for an easy layup through the defense. Reagan was not only making buckets, but passing the ball well throughout the game. Down by six, Carl Sandberg would answer to Reagan by throwing up a three-pointer. Sandberg would go on to defeat the Scots 39-19. We did show so many improvements than what we've usually been doing in the past. Um, more intensity from the bench as well as on the court. And um, what it came down to really is we beat ourselves. Uh, we just kind of fell apart mentally and didn't take care of the ball as well. But we'll make sure to get things done next practice. The JV squad will hit the court next on January 18th against Milliken University. That game at Glenny Gymnasium. The men's JV team played Illinois Central College for their first game of the season. The Cougars came out strong, taking the first half 35 to 21, and in the second half, the Scots relied on foul shots, sinking over the half of shots from the line. The Scots were able to make multiple drives to the basket, but in the end, fell short. They lose 79 to 45 to the Cougars. It'll definitely motivate us. Uh, it's an eye opener. Um, this isn't high school basketball anymore. We have to come to play. The JV team will be on the road to play Blackhawk College East tomorrow. There's your look at sports. Here are your scores for this week. That's it for MCTV this week. I'm David Beidel. And I'm Janessa Calderon. Join us next year for another new episode of MCTV. And I'm Tori Philbin. You can also visit us on the web at monmouthcollege.edu slash MCTV. 
Thank you for watching. Good luck in your finals, and we'll see you next year.